Well, welcome back to Business Week on Arise News. I'm joined now by CEO of Beyond Limits and former Google West Africa Director, Dr. Juliet Ehimwen, to discuss some of the top stories of this past week in more detail. Great to have you on the show. Always Juliet. great to be here. So we're going to start with the Sony story, Sony right. entertainment giant, which has tanked his, its merger, planned merger with the famous Z. Z Entertainment, Z TV, we all very much love yes. here in Nigeria. It was a $10 billion deal. What went wrong? Yes, so uh, that's a deal that has been in negotiations for the last two, actually slightly over two years. And there were a number of things. One was just the CEO. So the intention was for the current CEO of Z Entertainment World to be the CEO of the new entity. But he's, he's, he's had issues with the regulators in India recently. And for that reason, Sonny is no longer comfortable mm. having him be the CEO. So there's some disagreement there. And then also, since the conversation started in 2021, Z has also lost some of its value. So its share value has been down by about 8% mm -hmm. since that period. And also its, uh, its cash reserves have reduced by more than 50%. And so, you know, the market value and capitalization is in yeah. question. And I'm sure those have also resulted in some disagreements around share ownership and so on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this is one that would have been quite a great marriage because you have two giants okay. in the entertainment space. Um, as you mentioned, Z, Z World is a household <laughs> name in India and also in Nigeria. Oh, yes. <laughs> a lot of us caught the bug. And they have, you know, a plethora of content in Hindu and uh, Hindi and a, a number of languages. Sony as well has a lot of great content in, mm. in the region. Combined, they would have had over 90 channels together. Wow. Um, the, the projection was that revenues would be up by $2 billion mm. uh, on an annual basis. And of course, the value of the entity was meant to be about $10 billion. So this is something that was really big. And... Even though Sony has mentioned that it's not going to, pulling out from the merger would not affect their books in the year ending March because yeah. they didn't really factor that in. It's very likely that there would be added pressures for those for both entities because there's competition. Of course, um, you know Disney, for example, is merging with Reliance, right, mm. in the region. Another and so, Indian entity. Exactly, yeah. and uh, and the uh, Indian uh, business unit for Disney, and so there's going to be that uh, a lot of pressure. And we've seen Sony, you know, over the years they've been vertically integrating mm. and going deeper into the value chain. We've seen, you know, from Sony Music and. The hardware systems from good old Sony Walkman that we yeah. were all familiar with, uh, Betamax, uh, PlayStation, and so on. So it's very likely that we'll see either this deal come back to the table mm -hmm. if they're able to resolve these differences or another deal. But I think this year we're likely to see a lot more of such acquisitions. And, Indeed. you know, there have mm. been some success stories around that, you know, with uh, Disney and 21st Century Fox um, yes. and a number of others. Yeah, and then of course, this just for the highlights, just the huge market that India is, that, that point should not yes, be missed. Yes, from, absolutely. From all of this. Yes. Yes. But um, Sony Z, maybe, let's see how that goes. But one entertainment tech company that's doing great is Netflix. It's yes. literally just living corpses yes. along the way. <laughs> and, and, and Netflix builds yes. its empire. 260 million subscribers, yes. adding 13 million subscribers in, in the one last quarter. quarter. One quarter. What yeah. is the closest competition for Netflix now with, with these well, figures? Well, you know, in Africa, okay. Showmax okay. has been giving them a run for their money. All right. So Netflix had about 40% share. It went down to about about 35%. In, Showmax on the African is now, market? Yes, Showmax yeah. is now number one, right? Yeah. But, you know, credit to Netflix. Mm. It's, uh, it's a story of growth and also recovery. Okay. Because around the... A time of the pandemic, we saw a rise in its revenues and its fortunes, understandably, because people were at home, they needed entertainment, so mm. the demand went up. But after the pandemic, that went down, their revenues went down. And, you know, they've really been looking at how to address that and, uh, you know, ensure prof uh, profitability. Now, there are two things you look at, reducing cost or increasing your revenue. Their cost profile is you have some fixed infrastructure costs, yes. right? And then you have the cost of programming. 
they've invested a lot in creating regional programming, which is awesome. Yeah. And it's endeared a lot of users to the platform. Mm -hmm. You have a plethora of African content on Netflix today, as an example. And the algorithm as well that really, you know, uh, exposes it you to exactly the based on your interests. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so you have those, but in terms of <coughs> revenue, they had to look to subscriptions. Mm -hmm. And net, net, uh, Netflix subscriptions have been like a community affair. Okay. You get a subscription, and then your friends, your family, everyone I in your they household. I thought they curb that. They have. So okay. that's uh, that's what's working for them now. Okay. Where they've introduced paid subscriptions, where to add people to your subscription, you have to do that at, at a fee. And uh, there was an initial backlash when that happened. It was a risky strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, users were not happy. But I think because they have also done a lot of due diligence in ensuring that the programming on the platform is robust and it's, it's appealing, mm -hmm. They've continued continue to attract users Fantastic. and people are willing to pay. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because Amazon recently went on a huge drive for African yes. content, but they've recently cut back some yes. of their original content creation yes. pillars. Yes. You know? Um, so it's in interesting Africa. to see how they're faring versus Netflix. Yes, yes. So the Amazon top Prime, that absolutely. Is, mm. So when you look at the African market for streaming video on demand, you have three top players: uh, Showmax, Netflix. And Amazon Prime was a distant third. Okay. So it faced a lot of competition from the first two entrants. But also, when you think about it, um, across the continent, we have the numbers, mm. but low purchasing power. Right. And when you think about streaming services, people have to pay for data, and then pay for subscription. Mm. And then when you think about access to debit and credit cards, some people just don't have the, the mechanisms to be able to mm. uh, pay for these services. So all of that combined, I think Amazon Prime found that their projections for the returns didn't really match, the, the reality mm. didn't match, match the projections. Yeah. And you know, Africa is a place where you do need patience Right, you need to be here for the long haul. You need to think about the ecosystem holistically uh, for you to be successful. And I think, um, yeah, this yeah. this short term approach has, uh, yeah, it hasn't really yeah. worked out as expected. Well, winners and losers all around on the African continent. Microsoft is cutting almost two thousand jobs, uh, especially from Activision and Xbox. And it did a deal to acquire yes. Activision last yes. year yes. after a year long yes. <laughs> year long series of court yes. cases around that particular yes. acquisition. What's happening in the tech world now? Because we're seeing the cycle of layoffs for yes. the past two years consistently. Yes. So in the case of Microsoft and Activision, it is a consolidation. Okay. So you, as you rightly said, they acquired Activision. And um, that was in, I think, 2021 for about $68.7 billion. So it was quite a huge acquisition. And the intention was to just really establish their hold on the gaming industry. Mm. Um, and you know the recent layoffs have to do with just really um, reducing the, eliminating um, overlaps, um, redundancy, and also just consolidate, consolidating because the combined gaming business at the moment is about 22,000 people. Okay. And so the layoffs represent about 8% of that workforce. And so it's really uh, about optimizing the returns and, and looking at a sustainable cost structure. And that's mm. uh, the words of the CEO of the gaming division. Uh, but beyond that, yes, we have seen a lot of uh, layoffs within the tech space. A lot of the global tech giants mm -hmm. have been announcing a series of layoffs. And, you know, a lot of this has to do with earnings. As I mentioned earlier, uh, when you're trying to optimize earnings, it's either you're increasing revenue or you're reducing costs, costs yeah. right? Um, and uh, if there's a, if demand is not growing as expected and your revenues are not you know, flying off the roof, then you need to think about cost optimizations to maintain mm. earnings because um, the impact of a drop in earnings can be very um, harmful to the organization. Uh, we saw last year when Oracle reported just a slight dip in their earnings, their share price went down. Them for it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So companies are really very, uh, very mm. particular about that. Yes. And our final story today is Sam Altman still making moves, still in the news. We heard from him at Davos. Of course, yes. Arise was at yes. Davos in, in the past couple of weeks. Still so bullish on AI. He's investing yes. in new chip factories, mm -hmm. trying to raise money for chip factories because yes. he sees a strong future demand yes. for this. But, you know, the pace of AI development, yes. you know, I'm not sure the, the world has kind of got to grip with what AI regulation might look like. What are your thoughts in light of this recent move by Sam Altman? 
So you're absolutely right. Um, you know, first of all, after the launch of ChatGPT, the demand for AI services just went through the roof. And, um, you know, like you mentioned, everywhere now, everyone is talking about generative AI and there are so many solutions coming up. So Sam's move is in anticipation of future demand. Okay. The fact that he can see the trend, this is a trend that is going to continue. And so he's trying to, you know, solve for that, uh, that demand, which is a different approach because, you know, you already have cheap manufacturers like NVIDIA, mm. right? Uh, last year, they hit about a trillion dollars in revenue just because of the increased demand. And a lot of other players have been leveraging uh, NVIDIA's chips. The H100 GPU is one of the popular mm. um, uh, chips that have been used. But Sam is looking at actually fabric creating his own um, set of companies that would fabricate, fabricate these uh, processors. So that's a different approach. But to your point about the pace of change, I do agree. I think uh, when Chat's GPT launched, the competitive pressures increased. Right. And it almost seemed like everyone's then rushed to the market. The problem with that is you start to compromise the due diligence that mm. you should do around, you know, questions about ethics, right? About, you know, responsibility, about, you know, our humanity and, mm. and, and her, placing that side by side with the capa uh, capabilities of these machines and what's possible. And th globally, we haven't gotten it right yet around yeah. regulating AI, even though everyone understands that there is a risk, mm. right? Uh, and there should be, an, you know, five things I would say that should really be on the table and front and center when we think about global regulations for AI. One is that, you know, expanded requirements for organizations to be transparent about their AI algorithms. Okay. Mm -hmm. The second should be regular audits and investigations of those algorithms. Okay. Because, you know, human beings are, you know, with all our talents, etc., we're not necessarily perfect beings, right? Yeah. And if people are unchecked, you know, you just never, you, mm. it's hard to tell what can happen, especially with such power, right, Indeed. that these platforms possess. The third would be um, just leveraging the assurance community, the assurance network, so mm. that people are really uh, monitoring and, and um, ensuring that we have uh, the AI sandboxes to facilitate communication between the regulator and the regulated entities, especially developers, mm. and also to encourage whistleblowing and okay. complaints, right? I think those five things are very important to just put in the necessary checks and balances as we build, because when you look at what's possible with these platforms, yes, there's a lot of positive developments, mm. there's a lot of growth, productivity enhancement, but on the other side, you know, there's a great capacity to use these technologies for uh, things that are not necessarily serving humanity, yeah. right? So it's important that we have those checks and balances. Especially and if it, the technology is falling into the wrong hands. With well, that's it. The threats we have around the world and the global challenges, whether Absolutely. it's terrorism, cyber security threats, whatnot. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's why it's, uh, it's really important that it's not just free reign that you have these checks by the communities, so the, the, the assurance networks, audits mm. and investigation, requirements around transparency, encouragement of whistleblowing and, um, and complaints, you know, all the kinds of things that would, that are adopted in a lot of industries that yes, would just indeed. really curb, uh, just really put that, um, a filter. Yeah, very well said, Dr. Juliet Human. You know, with AI, the road is long and hard. We need experts like yourself to help give governments, policymakers, and private sector insights like this uh, on the future of AI. Great to have you with us on our top stories this week, as always, Dr. Juliet. Thank you. Ehimwen, CEO of Beyond Limits and former Google West Africa director.